I didn't know about this book. Somehow it was completely off my radar. But I purchased Brock Lesnar's book from a decade ago or something. Oh, yeah. Written by well, him and he, Paul he, Heyman. He's never read one, much less written one. It was ghost written <laughs> by somebody. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But in it, he talks about OVW. There's never a mention of you. It's all OVW, Danny Davis, Louisville. Got out of there. Yeah, because that's because I saw from this. What's that old fucking song? I had your number as soon as you walk through the door. Don't call us, child. We'll call you. Um, Sugarloaf. Uh, from the start, I could tell he had no personality because he was sullen. He wasn't outgoing. He wasn't a wrestling fan. He wasn't a fucking cut up in the locker room. He had been catered to as a star athlete in these fucking cow towns that he grew up in in South Dakota or whatever. He wasn't working as hard as the other guys were working because he was a natural genetic freak and didn't have to. But he was somewhat boring and not particularly well suited to the personality side of this business, which is why that I gave Shelton to him as a tag team partner, because Shelton could do everything and was exciting and actually likable. Brock was not a, I wanted him as a baby face because he was a NCAA heavyweight champion uh, from just a few years previous. So it's not like, you know, he an all American hero. And also he wasn't ready to be a heel yet. He was, he was a heel personality, but he was a shitty pro wrestler. He hadn't learned anything. He didn't know anything. So he started out as a baby face because that was going to be easier, but he didn't want to be a baby face. He didn't like to be nice to the people. One time, he, a couple of people started hooting him at the St. Therese Church gym show, and he gets on a microphone, cuts a heel promo on them. So when he came back up, I said, do you enjoy turning heel? I said, now, you're going to fucking be a goddamn baby face from here on out. If, you, if Vince McMahon, who's paying you this $250,000 a year, wants you to be a goddamn ballet dancer, you'll be wearing a tutu on Broadway. So don't cut any more goddamn heel promos when you're supposed to be a baby face. Learn how to make them like you or find a new line of business. He didn't like that shit. He was constantly trying to get out of OVW from the time that he showed up. Because he didn't want to be down here training with the guys. He wanted to be training with Brad Rangins in Minnesota in a barn. And that's when he pulled the, oh, my girlfriend's pregnant. I got to go back home for six months. He was making five times at least what the other developmental guys were making. Wasn't working as hard. Didn't want to be involved in the program. And was trying to find excuses to get out of it. So I didn't push him as hard as I would have pushed somebody that was really into it. Because I knew he had the physical capability. But, um, you know, he was just, and and he was always, he loved Danny Davis because Danny Davis was a broken nose, pug nose, tough ass bastard. He was a coach. Brock liked coaches. But he would piss off the referees, the managers. Maybe Chris K, one referee, made him cry, browbeating him some kind of way. And he just, he was not enamored of the program and him and fucking Batista because Batista ended up sucking up to Triple H. Uh, he, he and Batista are the only ones that had anything bad to say about OVW because in Brock's case, he didn't want to be there to begin with. And in Batista's case, he was just a pussy whipped fucking frail fucking guy that didn't understand the business he was suddenly in and didn't like the gimmick that I gave him because it wasn't him. He fancied himself James Bond which is what he got to be when he became the son-in-law's favorite workout partner. But I didn't see James Bond. I saw a fucking mid-30s guy, greener than a pepper tree, injury-prone, and pussy-whipped and browbeaten by his wife. But anyway. Yeah, is there an ending to that? <laughs> no, that I'm just, just, just saying that. So they're the two. You asked about Brock didn't say anything about OVW really or anything. Everybody else. It was one of the high points of their career, and they learned so much. But those two, because they were their own individual, they were each one of them a bird in this world. Uh, they didn't like it. I didn't care. 